and welcome to chapter 11 of Coleman on Purpose. This is David J. Coleman here getting ready to start you out with the first, I guess, in person Coleman on Purpose before I was like recording separate my truths and everything like that before time. But now I am here and I am kind of caught up to date on my Coleman on Purpose finally. And I am now 40 years old, so this kicks off uh, the beginning of something new, a new year, uh, new things, new things to look forward to as being a 40-year-old. I'm out of my 30s. It's so hard to believe that. Like, my mind is still not wrapped around that. So I'm here trying to start something fresh and new, and I wanted to uh, start this out kind of like this today because I'm so used to being in front of the camera. Like, usually when I do something in front of a camera, it usually is me talking to the camera but I'm actually just recording myself doing the podcast so that there can be a visual to go along with it. So it's not as hard for me to like if I want to post something on uh, whether it be on like YouTube or something like that, I can do that with a visual now. So it's something I've been wanting to do for a while. So I'm just trying it out like this whole process of podcasting is kind of like like a try and go, try and go. So it's it's been great, like doing it and learning some things and and, and kind of doing some things. So. Yeah, just like that. So it won't be a lot of stopping and starting and all that. I won't have time to edit. So it's, it's really live and in person. So I kind of like this, though, because I can just kind of flow the way I want to. So I've kind of been just looking around the world a little bit and seeing how uh, how many crazy things are happening around us. You know, it seems like we go through these phases of like off and on where it's really cool for a moment and then things get really wild. And a lot of people like to blame it on like Mercury retrograde, all this these different things that are going on and all these connections, I don't know, they're, they're just out of nowhere, but I'm, I've am i been able to keep myself, uh, I, I've distracted myself in healthy ways, but I still feel pretty centered um, and in my groove. I'm kind of working to uh, establish maintaining relationships. It's becoming a lot easier for me now through therapy and all of those types of things. And I just know there's so much more work left for me to do as far as like purpose and what I'm here to do. And, you know, I've been working left and right, working pretty hard, but it's it's been cool, you know, because um, things are kind of slowing down a little bit and we're getting back to kind of a norm um, in the industry that I'm in working and flying and stuff like that. So I'm just taking things day by day, which was it just that's what everybody really should do. You should be trying to take things uh, day by day. Um, I just finished uh, the last chapter Let's talk about sex. I wanted to mention that before we move on um, to our main My Truth today. And I'm telling you, when I tell you how many ears were tuned in for that chapter, uh, it was like, okay, I guess sex does sell. But I mean, it's it's really not about that. It's something that I have wanted to touch on for a long time because it's a deep seated issue and things that I have to go through and talk about in therapy. So it's something that I really wanted to touch on because I feel like I'm I'm either too shy to talk about it or I just don't want to. So a lot of people chimed in. I've I, some of the other people have reached out like, oh man, that was a wonderful episode. And I'm I'm gonna go back and listen to them some of the old ones. But that's the purpose, you know, when something intrigues you or something somebody likes a topic that's good because then they'll say, well, maybe there were some other things that I wanted to grasp or hear from you also. So I encourage you guys go back, listen to these chapters. Um, it, it basically does build upon to where I'm at now. It's like some of the stuff that I talk about, some of the things that I've I've gone through, it builds from my story. So those first 10 chapters are very crucial to like just understanding how I think about things, how I process things, how my life has basically been. So this is, like I said, my first time getting on here. Um, I'm, I have notes like right in front of me. If you're just listening to this by way of like uh, either Apple podcast or listening to things by way of Spotify or however you're choosing to listen to it. Um, this is my first time doing this live. So I'm just going to flow right into the my true section because this is kind of how I want my uh chapters to be set up from here on out, even when I bring on guests and stuff like that. You, you start out with talking about things and then you just flow into the My Truth section. So here is My Truth. And this section is uh, chapter 11, which is called You Are Not Alone. And this uh, chapter will really have a lot to do with uh, where I've been at for like the past months, you know, even pulling away a little bit from posting so much on social media and doing different things. Um, there was a reason behind that because this whole transition of me actually moving into my own 
house and having my own space and being in my own, you know, really on my own now, it it gets me like thinking and, and wondering sometimes like in those really, really quiet moments. A lot of times when I have a friend come over or, or they'll ask me like, how is it being in your house now? I'll kind of say, OK, just be quiet for a moment. Just like that, a real silence. And I'm like, this is how it is for me living here by myself. Sometimes it's just like these quiet moments. I feel like sometimes people like to stay busy just to stay busy because they don't want to really deal with being alone. And I really wanted to touch on this because in the industry that I work in, if you go back to one of my chapters that I I talk about this, uh, why I read I, I think that was chapter four. Um, I really talk about my life as a flight attendant and how lonely it can be at times. And this was triggered, this actual chapter, even though I'm talking about this, you know, in this present time, it's a perfect time for it because this was actually triggered back at the beginning when I was preparing these chapters and it was um, sitting, you know, as a flight attendant, like, man, I do feel alone at times. And, you know, I, I do believe that a lot of times we make these choices to separate ourselves or be alone sometimes because everybody has choices. Everybody um figures out the way that they can best cope with living alone, being being on their own, being by themselves. So I think it's, it's really a choice. And sometimes I feel like people do regret, um, you know, they, they regret the choices they make, but sometimes they don't. Um, you have to walk on this road alone sometimes. And and everybody's always like, well, you, do, you always need somebody to walk with you. Yes, you do need you do need people. You need supportive people around you to walk with you. Not always. Not everybody is going to be able to walk that journey with you. And then you wonder, like, why certain people are with you for certain periods of time or they're there for seasons of your life. That's the reason why it's because you've made a choice and this is a kind of a path you want to walk on. And then either people are here or they're not going to be there. Um. Life choices can sometimes bring you to feelings of isolation sometimes. And this is something that I've been kind of talking about. I'll talk about a little bit later on, too, just with my you know, therapist just talking about ways of, you know, being social or getting to know people. It's a little bit harder sometimes when you're in this process of really figuring out who you are and and really pulling apart those layers of you that you've never seen before. I think that um, some of the choices have always been predicated on discovering or growing into my highest potential. That's kind of how I've always worked. I've always been like, how can I reach my best potential? What are these are choices I have to make so I can be who I want to be and who I feel that I am inside. And I, I do sometimes feel like I was unclear where I was headed in this process or or learning these things. I, I felt like I needed sometimes to make these drastic changes in order to find that thing that I wanted to be. I was like, if, if I was moving a certain way, it had to be some kind of quick shift or something really like grand or something like that in order to make me feel like I did something. Um, That that really caused me never to really be settled. I never got into this mode of settling or, or I didn't, I never wanted to be settled. Let's put it that way. I never wanted to be in this settled form. Like I didn't want to feel like I was, I was settling. So I would try to do these big moves or do some other type of move to get me out of that, that mode that I was in or that feeling that I was in because I never really wanted to sit in that alone time. I never wanted to be by myself. I was either trying to find someone to either love or I was trying to find a friend or I was feeling sorry for myself because I couldn't find a friend at that time or it would just be all of these different things. And even in that, I did have friends that reached out to me. That's the crazy part about it. I had friends that reached out to me. I had people that were trying to be part of my life, but it was almost like I was still trying to figure stuff out. So I would either tell that person like, you know, I'm really not here for this right now. I'm not like, you know, it's, you know, this is not working towards my, you know, my full potential. This isn't this. So it's like these picky things. And then you wonder sometimes why you are alone. But it really is in you trying to figure out yourself in that alone time. Um, and and not, not a lot of people want to go through that process of doing that. So they always stay occupied, always stay busy, always stay. Something has to be going on in order for you to feel that, to feel something. So. I, I never really felt settled in that time. And so in this fast paced society that we have today, we're taught never to really, you know, settle or slow down and and 
take things in where they are. That's something, that's one of the first things when I talked to my therapist, that was one of the first things. And I'm always going to, like I said, I know you guys get tired of me saying therapy, therapy, therapy. It's so important for everybody. And I, I'm always going to make that a thing because it, it's important for everybody. Someone passed it to me. I'm passing along to others. It's an important thing. So when I started going, that was one of the first things she was talking about, living in that moment, taking in the moment, realizing where you are in those moments. That's what helped me to slow down. And that's what helped me to be like, man, I need to slow this this society. You're getting things thrown at you left, right, left, right. And you don't really know when to slow down because you're just you're just wheeling out of control and wanting to to find something to do to, to keep you from being alone or feeling like you're alone or out here in this world alone. And many times your mind can trick you into feeling like you are alone and you really aren't. That's the craziest part about it. Um, I don't only lean on people, though. That That's my thing. I don't only lean on just people. It's in those times where I feel like I am alone when I'm not trying to lean on my source, which is God. Um, it's, it's in those times that I feel the most alone because at I don't have friends or I'm not even trying to lean on God. So, yeah, I'm going to feel like I'm alone. So I'm learning that there's there's many lessons that I have learned on my own. As I, I've been going through these processes and steps, there are lessons that I'm learning. And then when people talk to me, they're like, man, you sound so clear right now. You sound so very bold in what you're saying is because I'm learning lessons along the way. I'm not just taking things, you know, you know, right as they are. I'm really thinking these things through and really trying to better myself by the experiences that I go through. And I'm not trying to repeat same cycles. Let's put it that way. I'm not trying to run around in circles anymore. So I I feel like I'm learning, learning those things and it's taking time to do that. But I, I, I have always felt like some of my best moments of learning have been when I am alone. Um, because if I have so much chatter in my ear or things are going on or occupying my mind so much, I'm not taking the time to listen to myself, to listen to my heart. I'm saying yes to everything that everyone is asking. I'm I'm not saying no to things that aren't going to benefit me at that time. I'm just running and you're running, running, running all the time. And our our minds can sometimes make us feel certain things when when we are walking a path by ourselves, like I was just saying, when we're when we're thinking about these things, when we're really trying to analyze every single thing that's going on in our lives we sometimes can lose sight of what who we are and what we are supposed to be bringing to the world and then we have the fears i i talk about fears all the time because i i begin to think about maybe not reaching my full potential maybe dying before i accomplish all of my dreams and goals or not having anyone to care for or about me when i get older so those things came from choices that I made, like I divorced. I those were decisions that were made by me. Yes, there were things that had to do with with what was going on in the relationship and things like that. But those are still choices that the two people make or the person makes or another person makes or there's there's choices that everyone gets to make along the way. And that will determine like the flow of things from from out of there. But I always you know, feared that like if I did go alone by myself or walk this path by myself, you know, and that comes from those fears of what happened to me when I was 20. If you go back, I'm always telling you, go back to chapter two. That is my that is part of my story. It's a huge part of my story. Chapter two will let you know all about that. But if you if you really look at it, it's like you're trying to just hold on to this because you're afraid. And when you work out of fear, that is not the real you inside. That is not really who you are working off of these fear, these fear tactics and all of that. that that's not you. That's not that's not where that comes from. So I, I've always wondered if there was truth behind if you if it was just you or the other person that knows how to love or take care of you. I was wondering if there was truth behind that that person knowing or loving or taking care of that person. I don't want to mix up what I'm saying right right now. Um I was basically on a part where I was talking about my dreams and my goals and I'm going to I'm going to come back around to that because I am live. I'm doing this this like this and as I'm reading my notes there's nothing that I want to skip. So before I get there, I want to go back to that one point that I was talking about of just having those fears and everything that was going on and th- those fears don't come from that. 
I want to go back to this sermon that I listened to today. I'm glad that I went back up in my notes because I didn't want to skip this part. And probably it didn't want, it want me to skip it because it's an important piece. Um, this sermon that my pastor, I go to Elevation Church out here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and my pastor preached a message. It was a part two of a message called God's Got Your Back. And he talked about God being with you, even if you haven't made all the right decisions and that walking in fear is not God leading you. And I totally agree with that because all the times when I felt the most fearful or the or I like I didn't didn't want to do something. It was those moments where I would either feel uh, sick to my stomach or I would feel like, oh, my gosh, I feel like I'm, I'm getting weak. I, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm not doing well. But I was operating out of this fear, this fear of stepping forward, stepping ahead, doing things that I'm, I'm, I'm meant to do. Like sometimes when I go and I audition for things or I go out and I'll, I'll act, there'll be this big old ooh, in me that I'm feeling like so nerve wracked. And I'll make I'll, I'll throw myself into this like dehydration or I'll be like not trying to drink water. It is just it's just crazy things where I'm so nervous about trying to do this. But that's fear like taking over me like. What if I'm not able to do this if, you know, the things that I went through before are going to come back just because I stepped out on a limb and I'm trying to do things for myself now? What if this happens? And that's always how I was kind of driven in the first right after the divorce. Like it was like there were these things that were always I was always fearing, like if I don't have a person with me or if my, you know, if my parents aren't agreeing with me or if there's something that's like something is going to go wrong. But what happened to that faith that I had that, you know, God was going to lead me through these things because he knew what I was going to do before I did it. So why would I fear? Why would I fear those things? So as I'm learning myself, as I'm learning these things about myself and I'm listening to these things, I'm feeling like, well, what if I, you know, never fell in love again or had the same feelings for another individual? Yeah, those are real fears, but I don't have to let them lead me. I don't let like that. I don't have to let them guide what I do or how I navigate myself or who I I choose to be around. That that's that's a major thing for me. So, I feel like in all reality I have a powerful source. <laughs> and that's the Lord. And I think that when I when my mind begins to wander or I feel lonely or you know, I'm I'm not feeling comforted, I know that beyond physical people in the world I can learn that there's another source, which I can't physically touch, but I can sure enough spiritually feel because I've felt it in crazy moments when I've been sitting there either alone or uh, different people have either distanced themselves from me or there's been, a, you know, just a time of, of just really me thinking about some things and re reassessing life and different things that I really would like to do in life. I always know that someone is guiding me and someone is leading me and someone is carrying me to those next steps and what what is next, what's coming up next, what I have to do, what what my life is going to bring. And that feeling has helped me through so many different phases of my life. It's led me through so many different things, which I have I I I can't be I, I can't thank him enough for all of those different things um, through all my mistakes, through all my frailties, through all the things that I have been through. There has been one guiding force that lets me know that I am never by myself, that I, I never have to fear, that I never have to feel like I am alone. And that is definitely through through God. And I know many people ask me sometimes, well, how do you always stay so upbeat? I'm not always upbeat. I'm not always happy. I'm not always cheery. I'm not always smiling. You know, they always say that the people that either smile the most, that the people that are laughing the most, the people that are, are always joking the most are the ones that are usually going through the most or thinking about the most things. So it's not always like that. But I know that I have something that I can lean on in those times. And everybody, you know, I, I don't try to direct anybody's life or what they can do. All I can do is speak from my own experience and what has helped me and what has pushed me forward. That's those are the only things that I, I can really depend on. So, no, I can't I can't tell anybody what or who they need to lean on, what's going to help them along. That's for them to find out. And that's for them to figure out on their journey. And that is my truth. So, yeah, that's that's my truth for today. And as I as I close today, I I'm, I'm thinking about some things. And as I'm, I'm the more and more I get into this and the more that I am 
doing my purpose and doing the things, you know, that I feel are important for the world to know or to see or to talk about, I feel like it's drawing me closer to, you know, even my my walk with Christ along the way, because there were times back in the day when I would be afraid to even say that I follow Christ. And it's becoming a lot more difficult now because there's so many different things that are out here in the world that people are seeing that are contradicting what, uh, you know, what I grew up and what a Christian is. And I even walked in that before when I was very deeply and heavily, heavily involved with with trying to be so churchy and trying to be, you know, not so judgy. You know, I was involved in that. And as I began to discover myself and knew that I was going to mess up eventually, I didn't have to be this perfect person. God was drawing me like closer to him. And it feels like on this journey, the more that I, you know, realize that it's all within me and that it's all here. I'm not as afraid to speak it out because it's going to be who the like in this juncture of my life. Basically, it's going to be whoever's going to ride with me is going to ride with me. Whoever's not is not. You know, if you're not feeling my spirit, then that's OK. You go ahead and do your thing. I'm not going to look at you any differently because of who you are. So I don't want you to look at me any differently because of who I am or what I walk in or what I, I profess. You know, so it, it really is giving me a new light, a new life of things. And I'm not here to preach to anybody on on a my purpose. This is about myself, the journey, and it's also to help others along from where they are in their journey if they want to hear it. And that's that's all I I can really do. So I I have said this recently and I wrote this down and I'm going to share it on here. It feels like I'm I'm starting to share it a lot more. I wrote this as a separate hidden journal feeling. I have a thing in my my phone hidden feelings journal that I do and it was just a little quote that I wrote and I shared it with my therapist, shared it with another friend of mine. And I yeah, I shared it with a couple friends of mine, but I said I am not going to let anyone drain the new life that God gave me back at the age of 20. I had you go back to chapter two. I'm always direct you back to chapter two. That's a lot of my that's a part of my story. But I will not let anybody take away this that is within within me. Like I said, many times people see that there's a new life in someone and people come and they'll nip and they'll take, 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 take all the time from you and drain you of the new life that you were given. And I will not allow those things to drain every bit of happiness, joy, peace, and and the great feeling that I have had in, in walking even alone by myself at times, but even in establishing new relationships. I am setting boundaries. I'm setting these things that let people know I have too much inside of me to just let it be picked away at and drain drain me back into those same circles or those same different patterns that I've always allowed myself to to be back in those in those times this is a new me this is a brand new person that is that is being birthed right in front of your eyes if you're following every single chapter it's like I am beginning to be reborn you know in in so many different ways right as I speak with you on these podcasts so I really do hope you've enjoyed this chapter 11 today. Next, uh, this upcoming week, or I don't know when I'm going to put this out, but I should, it probably will be when I am 40. Right now, I'm still 39, you know what I'm saying? But 40, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I'm going to start recording these uh, episodes with two of my best friends that are actually coming down here. I'm going to try to block out um, some time in our schedule while they're down here visiting Charlotte, the Queen City, to go ahead and um, record some uh, chapters with me of some of them, like things that I've talked about in the past, maybe, and hopefully get them on here and be as blunt and honest as they can be on this podcast. So like, it's going to be a whole different flow when I get, when we get together, it's a whole different thing. So be prepared. That's all I have to say. So I, I hope that we can block off that time so I can get them on there. If not, I'll try to do some type of zoom or something like that so I can get some people on here. Cause I always said, I want to have guests on here to like go over some things. So this has been Chapter 11 of Coleman on Purpose. I hope you've enjoyed this. And I hope the visual kind of adds to it a little bit with me just talking into the mic and spitting my thing. Remember, you can follow me on Instagram at D-E-L-U-X-E-D-A-V-E, Deluxe Dave. Or you can find follow me on TikTok at David J D A V I D J dot Coleman. I'm on there. Um, and 
let people know about this. Let people know about Coleman on Purpose. Go ahead, give some ratings on uh, iTunes if you can, on the podcast, like uh, the iTunes podcast. You know, let people know, subscribe, do whatever you got to do. Go to YouTube, follow my channel over there too at Deluxe Dave. I would love you for doing that. Remember, you are unique, you are loved, and you are created for greatness. Till next time, peace.